Yeah, so Masayo, 24 and 0, 16 knockouts, 27, 5, 6, 68 inch reach. He last beat Gary Russell Jr. in January of this year by majority decision for the WBC featherweight title. Um, so this is that was Gary Russell Jr.'s only loss in his pro career. Uh, now Vargas, he's 35 and 0 with 22 knockouts. He's 31, 5, 10 and a half with a 70 and a half inch reach, and he last beat. Leonardo Baez by unanimous decision in November of 2021. Now, it's worth mentioning that Vargas, he started his career at Bantamweight, and this is his second fight at featherweight. Um, Exayo is a career featherweight and a pretty big one at that. Now, looking at these their past two fights, what impressed me about Vargas' last fight against Baez was, although he was only two inches taller, he was still able to use his reach and was very good at getting in, getting his shots off, and getting out before Baez could land. And it's also worth mentioning that Mixayo and Baez have identical reach. Mixayo is four inches shorter than Vargas. Now, Gary Russell Jr. is a very good fighter, but in that fight, Mixayo got the majority decision. But Russell basically only had one arm for the last seven rounds of that fight. And he was still relatively effective in some spots, even with one arm. Now, Mexayo's strengths are his power and aggression, but he has to land in order for that power to have any effect. And he's going to have to do something with that aggression in order to win rounds. I say that because um, in the featherweight division, Ray Vargas is top five for punches thrown per round at 65 and a half per round. So, you know, if Mexayo is to use aggression, but it's getting 65 punches thrown at him. You know, it depends on how aggressive Mixayo is going to be. In those swing rounds, the judges still may favor Vargas' activity. But I think this fight is going to come down to levels, really. And I think that looking at Vargas, I think he's a better class fighter than Mixayo. There's definitely a chance he can get clipped, but I don't think Vargas will allow that to happen. And so I have Vargas winning by unanimous decision. Yeah, this is an interesting fight. It's going to be a barn burner. I, I have it as a barn burner. Uh, like you said, Danny, Ray Vargas, he throws, you know, lots of punches. He's a, he, you know, he's uh, a, a small guy, smaller than McSyle as far as, you know, density and, and, and the way he fights at. He's, a, he's taller and, and, and longer. Um, and also, he's, he, in some ways, he's built like uh, how Eric Morales used to be built when Eric Morales is at... Uh, uh, Super bad away. Um, so Ray Vargas could actually, you know, he, he can use that length, that wheel when he decides to. But the one thing that concerns me about Vargas sometimes, he squares up kind of like how uh, Sebastian Fedora does, where he just pretty much in a square. He's not really using that length and having that lean hand out there. Um, but he also can bang. I mean, he's shown a, a strong chin to this point, um, but he, he's definitely hittable. Uh, McSayo, a strong puncher with either hand. Um, he brought up the, the Gary Russell Jr. fight. Um, he did struggle with Gary Russell Jr. Even though, you know, he won that fight. He, he struggled with a one-hand Russell, where one-hand Russell was making a miss and went around off of uh, ring generalship. I don't think Vargas particularly fights that way. I think that the biggest thing that, that, that would concern me about Mark McSayo is his fight with uh, Seha when he had to come back and win that fight, uh, even though he had Seha down, but didn't finish him early, and Seha was able to put uh, McSyle down in that fight. Um, but then McSyle had to really come back and, and, and pretty much clip <laughs> clip uh, Seha and put him out. Um, so this fight is going to definitely be a, a ball burner. I think that Vargas actually is the better boxer. He can fight off the, the, the back foot. Um, but it, it does concern me he doesn't lose that lift like he should. Um, but I'll pick, I think my pick is loser got to cut the hair on this one. <laughs> and they got some weird hairs out. But I think what, what's going to happen in this fight, I, I do think that Vargas is going to outwork McSyle and give him a, a lot, of, a ton of work for most of this fight. I say more than two-thirds, two-thirds of this fight. But I see McSyle coming back and clipping Vargas. He's going to clip. Vargas with his, you know, Vargas like to, you know, have his chin up 
I think he's going to clip Vargas late in the fight. I say about the, the 10th round. So I got Maxi winning this fight by 10th round knockout. Yes, sir. Uh, I love it, man. Oh, man, this is going to be a goodie right here. You know what I mean? The Miller versus Mexican, you know, it's going to be a classic, kind of like Pacquiao Marquez. Not that they fight like each other, but just the connections that you have. And you got people who are really fond of, of, of uh, Max Silo, and you got people who are really fond of Ray Vargas. So it's going to be an interesting matchup on July 9th. Now, when you look at Maxilo, you guys mentioned the fact that he got that title from Russell in um, January, where most of his fights were in the Philippines. You know, he got that, he made a big splash, you know, when he got the victory over, uh, um, I want to say it's on the Ubis Manny card when he, when he knocked out Julio Seja. That was like KO the year. And then you got Vargas. Uh, you mentioned the fact that he just uh, defeated Leonardo Baez as a former champion. And he got his first belt in 2017. He had won a victory over Calvin uh, McDonald for the WBC. Built that he defended five times. You know, one of those offenses was against Ronnie Reels. You know, this is going to be boxer versus puncher. You got Maxiel, who's the puncher. You got Vargas, who's the boxer. Um, I look at it like this, where when you look at each guy, the advantages that they're going to bring to the table, where Vargas, he, he does a really good really job of keeping that distance. You know, fighting very technical from the outside, throws those straight punches. You know, fight smart, tall, rangy. And I think that he's going to try to use that strategy and then try to tie up Maxia as he gets close. And Maxia, on the other hand, he throws every punch with criminal intent. You know, he'll be on the hunt, trying to cut off the ring and apply that pressure to throw those heavy shots that he likes to throw. Initially, I was going to lean towards Ray Vargas. Saw a few more highlights of him. And I just think that Ray... It's two things that he does that's a no-no against somebody like Messiah. Messiah is a very vicious puncher. I don't know if Ray Vargas has faced someone as vicious of a puncher and as mean as Messiah in his career. He's defeated some good, some good guys now. I'm giving him a promo. But then Messiah is a different animal. Uh, he's one of those guys that you, you doubt. Uh, I, I was going to use the, 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 the four-letter word. He's one of those guys that you almost have to kill in order to defeat. So, with that being said, and with this, this punching power and speed, this accuracy, and the fact that Vargas, he leaves his chin in the air just a little bit too much for my liking, and then also, he's a little wide in his punches. So, I think that at some point, Messiah is going to get in there and clip his chin, and I think that that's what's going to, you know, rule the day. And so, I have Messiah late, stop 